Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So we've taken a look at a lot of rocket launchers on this channel. I mean, Nerf doesn't really make a lot of rocket launchers, but the ones that they do make are pretty bold. Like for example, the Gallarhorn, being this shell-fed mega dart shooting monstrosity that you can also mod in like immediately to shoot Mega XL, and all it costs is 3D printing filament and making a shell. But if you talk to most people, they probably won't tell you that that is the definitive Nerf rocket launcher, even though it's a freaking rocket launcher. You mount it up on your shoulder, it's gigantic, it's excessive, and it's fun. Truly, the definitive Nerf rocket launcher came out all the way back in the End Strike series and is lovingly known as the Titan. Not that one, the other Titan. And this one, unlike the Titan CS50, is actually one of the coolest, funnest blasters that Nerf ever made. <laughs> Titan ASV-1. You wouldn't really be able to tell that this thing is a rocket launcher just by looking at it. It looks like some sort of weird SMG looking thing with a big barrel on it. So you're probably thinking, huh, it's a rocket launcher, eh? What is it supposed to shoot? Do you put like a Mega XL dart in here and then you hold it like this and then it shoots? Uh, no. Let me show you the projectile it actually shoots. Yeah. I wasn't kidding when I said it was a rocket launcher because it shoots an actual rocket, unlike every other Nerf rocket launcher ever made. This is a Titan rocket, and it is so big that you could probably fit 50 half-length darts inside of it. No, like seriously, here's a half-length dart, here is a demolisher rocket, which has always been seen as like the biggest projectile, and here is the Titan rocket. Yeah, it's gargantuan. This projectile is the biggest, like, floating, the, the biggest thing that Nerf has ever made to fly through the air. It is actually the definitive Nerf nuke. If there ever was a Nerf nuke, it would be the Titan rocket. And, uh, this is probably the rarest projectile that Nerf has ever made. You never find Titans available with these. The only reason that I have this one is because I spent $300 to get a brand new Titan in the box that had never been opened to guarantee that the missile would be there. But usually they don't come with these. These things are insanely rare and hard to find and chances are you're probably not gonna see them in person. So yeah, here it is next to my head for scale, just so you understand how big this missile is. And if you thought I was joking about it being able to hold 50 half darts, there's still half darts in there. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it can hold 50 half darts inside. But yeah, we've got a lot to talk about here and I am going to really quickly show it to you, just show you what the barrel looks like. And now the projectile is gonna go on and stay on through the remainder of this video. But first, we gotta start with the design, and I gotta say, this blaster looks really bold. It is completely different than literally anything else I've ever seen Nerf make. It is super unconventional and so rocket launcher. Like, it looks like a rocket launcher. When you hold it like this, and you pull this plunger out, and you put it on your shoulder, that's a rocket launcher. You only like this? Yeah, no, this is a rocket launcher. If there's ever been a Nerf rocket launcher, it's this one. Every single thing here looks insanely cool. It's just this giant red monstrosity with like this sort of metallic tubing and stuff underneath it that makes it look like this steampunk beast of a construction of human engineering. It is an insanely cool looking blaster and surprisingly not the biggest blaster I've ever seen. The blaster minus the barrel is barely bigger than a rapid strike. It's about the same size as the rapid strike and that's really interesting because I genuinely thought that this was going to be like the biggest baddest blaster ever made and in fact if you close the plunger it is smaller than the rapid strike. It genuinely isn't very big but that's actually a good thing because it means that you might actually be able to use this thing in a loadout. Imagine using this in a loadout nowadays. Holy. The best part about the design though is that every single thing on this blaster that isn't red has been painted on both sides, obviously. They painted everything on both sides except the Nerf logo. And what's really weird is that the Nerf logo has only been painted on the side with the screw holes. 
This blaster is literally unconventional in so many different ways that I can't even go through all of them. That's insanely weird. But you guys may have noticed a few weird or unique design details that don't seem to make sense. Mainly the large bracket on the bottom of the kind of grips up here and this thing. There's a very big reason for those being there. The bottom bracket is meant to attach to the top bracket on a Hornet. So you would do this and it looks like one big solid piece and it really does. It looks like it's meant to be. This is a really cool looking design and I think that both of these blasters together is one of the most terrifying and intimidating looking things you can possibly be running. As for the side bracket right here, it is meant to connect to this thing, the Scout. And if you actually flip the Scout upside down and you slide it on, you can see that it's a rail adapter and it clicks right in and now you have a Unity power system, which is literally just all three of these wired together into one giant monstrosity. And a review on this entire unit put together will be coming at some point but all you really need to know right now is that when the blaster is a unity power system it looks horrifying it is so big and so intimidating like it is heavy there's a lot of plastic here but again, a full review on this entire monstrosity will be coming sooner than later. But going back to the individual Titan, let's continue on with the ergonomics. This blaster has a main grip, a foregrip, and the stock slash shoulder rest thing, like is seen on the Gowerhorn or any other rocket launcher ever created in the history of history. So let's start with that, because it's the most interesting thing. You can brace this right up against your shoulder, but what's very interesting is that this big thing on the back, you can actually push up against the back of your shoulder, and it offers you a nice cheek rest to brace your cheek against and it somehow seems to like be a headrest as well I don't know why this thing is so comfortable to be pushing up against the back of your head and the back of your shoulder but it is actually one of the most comfortable braces I've ever seen it is insanely weird how good this works out. It's not perfect by any means. I mean, this thing right here kind of gets in the way of your shoulder, but still even not by much. Like for the most part, it's not touching me at all other than right here on my shoulder blade. And at that point, you don't really notice it that much. So honestly, this is one of the best stock like rocket launcher designs I've ever seen. As for the main grip, it could be bigger, but all things considered, it is a fantastic main grip. It is very, very comfortable, even though it is really thin like really really thin like look at how thin the grip is on the sides it is very nice smooth and fluted from all angles and there's a little bit of details on the side as for the foregrip it's not very good i think that the foregrip is way too square you can see that it's flat on the back and rather flat on the front so it's not the worst thing that i've seen but it definitely could be better one really interesting thing is because of how close the main grip and foregrip are together, it surprisingly feels like holding a P90, which doesn't make any sense because a P90 is incredibly small and incredibly compact, and this thing is incredibly big and incredibly bulky, and yet they feel very similar to hold. But honestly, holding this is one of the most enjoyable ergonomic setups I've seen, despite the square foregrip. And the only complaint that I really have with the ergonomics besides that is the fact that your finger and thumb are kind of in the same area. So trigger discipline is really annoying because your index finger should be up here. But when you actually go to pull the trigger, it rubs against the top of your thumb every single time. You really got to get used to it unless you can just get accustomed to moving your finger out and then bending it and then pulling the trigger. It's a really weird thing that you gotta get used to. I'm used to it because, again, I'm used to playing around with the P90, but you get the point. So how does this blaster work? Well, obviously, as if you couldn't tell, this whole thing isn't just an adjustable stock. It's a plunger, and as you pump it back and forth, it gradually fills up an air tank. So you have to pump it about 20 times in order to get the air tank completely full. And this gauge on the side of the blaster right here will tell you as you get closer, after that you extend it out, you brace it, and then you pull the main trigger to shoot. <laughs> that will never not make me laugh. It is so funny. See, the thing just go and slowly glide through the air. Yeah, the ranges out of this blaster are abhorrent. It, I can walk over here and pick up the missile. It landed in my full length bucket because, I mean, the missile hit the wall. But yeah, 
The ranges out of this thing are not good in the slightest. There are ways to make the ranges better, but I can't be bothered with this one. This was a brand new Titan and I don't exactly want to destroy this orange ring to get it open. I'll just buy another Titan if I really want to do that, but that's not really the point. The point is, it is absolutely freaking ridiculous. And all things considered, with how big this projectile is, I wouldn't expect it to fly far anyway, and all things considered, it is actually shooting pretty hard. Let's talk about the triggers though. This blaster has three. It's got a thumb button right here, it's got a trigger in the front, and it's got the main trigger. But the thing is, these two triggers only become mandatory when you start using it as a Unity power system. So I'm not going to address those two triggers in this video, I will address them when I do the review on the full Unity power system. So with that said, the main trigger right here is actually pretty smooth and responsive with one slight drawback, and that is the fact that if you tilt it up, you may have noticed uh, there's something rattling around in there. There are two ball bearings inside of this blaster that fall in place behind the trigger. It acts as a safety, so when you tilt it up, you suddenly can't pull either of the triggers. When it's put back down, you can pull the triggers again. That is actually done on purpose because the way you're meant to prime this blaster isn't by doing this like I do. It is meant to be put down on the floor and pumped like a bicycle pump. So you set it down like this, step on it, and then push it up and down. And at this point, then you fire it. <laughs> but it is actually a pretty good thing that it is set up like that because you have the missile aimed right at your face and you are literally putting pressure onto the triggers while you're pumping it. There's no way to avoid it. If this safety feature wasn't there and you prime this blaster the way that it is meant to be primed, you're gonna shoot yourself in the face. It's basically guaranteed. What the heck was that? So the performance out of this blaster is all over the place. It might shoot really far. It might just fart out and drop to your feet right in front of you. There's no way of knowing. In fact, I have no idea because I know that there are some seals on this blaster that are not functioning properly because it was left in a box for 21 years straight and never got any usage. So some O-rings somewhere along the line are obviously decayed. But all things considered, I think this blaster works well enough to warrant a review. So with all that out of the way, what do I think of this blaster? This thing is absurdly ridiculous and is so much fun to play with that I have almost no complaints whatsoever. Even with the terrible performance that this thing gets, you can't not smile when you pull the trigger and thing goes boom, and that giant freaking ridiculously sized projectile glides through the air and just crashes into whatever it hits. It crashes into what it hits. You could see it crash into the box. It's not like just a dart shooting into a box and pushing it back. It's got the impact of a Nerf wrecking ball. And at this point, I'm actually going to tell y'all a little bit of a story time. You see, I used to live in a cul-de-sac. And in that cul-de-sac, there was a group of kids who every now and then would come outside and play with Nerf guns. And I would see them from my window every now and then. I never really got to know them. But I knew that one guy had one of these. And what he would do is he called it the nuke. And the way the nuke worked in their game is if you saw the missile touch the ground, if you could see it, you were out of the game. Completely. You, you were dead. Because the nuke acts like a nuke and it obliterates everything that it sees. So you had to duck and hide behind something in order to avoid being destroyed by the nuke. So what this one kid would do with this plaster, and I remember watching and it was absolutely hilarious, is he would stand like off, in, off to the side and wait until everybody was in the middle of the road and then come running out with the nuke and pumping it up as fast as he could. And everybody would just go running and screaming, trying to find somewhere to hide. And it was so silly that I remember I would just sit and laugh thinking about it for like 20 minutes straight at a time. And it was just hilarious. I wish I could have played with them, but just watching the madness unfold every time that one kid showed up with this was worth all of those memories all by themselves. 
This blaster has an extremely high nostalgic factor. In fact, just looking at pictures of the thing online made me nostalgic. And having it in person is like a surreal experience because it's like I am seeing that chunk of my childhood up close and personal for the first time in my life. And there really isn't any other blaster that I get that experience with. But every time I see this, especially when you put the, the Scout and the Hornet on it and it becomes the Uni Power System, the nostalgia that emits from this thing is so great. I can't possibly explain it through words in this video. So obviously I am heavily biased in favor of liking this blaster. But even as an objective review, I gotta say, the blaster is insanely cool because it's got an air tank that is as big as my fist and you can do some horrifying mods to it. Horrifying. Imagine getting it to shoot a single half-length dart. It's meant to shoot this thing. Imagine getting it to shoot a single half-length dart. Do you have any idea the horrors that are created when you get something designed to shoot this to shoot this? Yeah. Screw FPS caps. And if you're just a doofus like me that loves big stupid rocket launchers, this thing will probably be up your alley already. If you do manage to find one with a missile and people aren't asking for the lottery winnings for it, I highly recommend checking it out and picking it up. With all that said, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>